Okay, welcome back. Um, in this episode, we're going to focus on the mechanisms involved in muscles actually getting shorter. So in the previous um, episode, we talked about the structure of a muscle and we looked at a muscle fiber and it turned out a muscle fiber is actually just a big cell with lots of cells stuck together. So this up here is showing us a muscle fiber and within that muscle fiber, there's these big long organelles called myofibrils and these are the working parts to the muscle. These are the other parts which all get shorter and these myofibrils, they're made up of the same thing stuck together over and over again. So this word here, sarcomere, goes from this Z line here to this Z line here. That represents one sarcomere and it's just repeating over again. Lots of sarcomeres stacked on top of each other. And each, my, uh, each myofibril is surrounded by sarcoplasmic reticulum, which is the, the muscle's version of endoplasmic reticulum. And what you need to know is, is this is where calcium ions are being stored. That's really important because it's the calcium ions which are going to be part of the, the ability for these fibers to be able to uh, cause a um, contraction. Okay, so quick recap. Um, this is one sarcomere. You can see you've got the thick myofilaments called myosin. And you can see a little bit of a crossover happening. These yellow lines, these are representing the thin filaments called actin. And these blue lines here are representing the, the boundaries of a, a one complete sarcomere. So if we were to go beyond here on the right, you could imagine there was another red marks here as well to show myosin as well. They're, just, they're all stacked together. Right, so in order for a muscle to get shorter, well, we need the thin filaments, the actin, to slide across the myosin. And it's a bit like a train doors sliding shut. So when it's relaxed, you can see this upper picture here, the actin, although it's still crossing over with the myosin, it's quite close to the edges of the myosin. And once a full contraction has taken place, you can see now that the actin has slid all the way towards the center of where, where the myosin is, which is that H band. So we're gonna talk about how that happens and it's called the sliding filament theory. Right, so this is showing actin. So actin is, is it's not just one structure, there's different things going on here. So we've got actin, we've got something called troponin, and we've also got tropomyosin. Now, in order for actin to slide over the myosin, the myosin acts a bit like a rowing boat with lots of oars. And if you imagine those oars, they're the little heads of the myosin grabbing hold of actin, pulling it. So if you look here as well, let me just go back a bit so you can see this. So here on the myosin, you've got these little projections sticking out. These can grab hold of actin and pull it, let go, pull, let go, pull, let go, and pull it towards the center. So we'll see what that looks like. So there's our three parts to actin. We've got actin, troponin, and tropomyosin. And then we've got these little squares here are the myosin binding sites. This is the bit that myosin is going to grab hold of. At the minute, myosin can't get access to it because the tropomyosin is covering it. All right, so when your muscle is stimulated, if an impulse reaches there, what's gonna happen is the action potential is gonna go, go from the motor neuron across the synapse, the, the, the cholinergic synapse, because it's acetylcholine, and the impulse is gonna continue down into the, right down to the muscle fibers, and when that happens, it's going to stimulate the endoplasmic, the, sorry, the sarcoplasmic reticulum to release the calcium ions. And those calcium ions are going to bind on to the troponin. And as soon as they do that, the troponin is a protein. That protein's 
tertiary structure is going to change. So it's going to cause it to slightly change shape. And when it changes shape, it's going to pull the tropomyosin out of the way. So you can see now those little myosin binding sites have been exposed. So now myosins, this is our myosin. These are these, this, as I was saying, these are like the, the oars of a rowing boat. They can now bind on. And as soon as they bind on, now this is what's going to happen now. You're going to get what's called a power stroke. They're going to pull the actin towards the center. So that is a, this, the, the, the myosin head, that's its normal shape. That there requires energy to put it into that position. It's a bit like an old fashioned cowboy gun where they have to pull, they have to pull back before they fire the trigger. That hammer part at the back of the gun that requires energy to pull it back. So that's the same happening here. So this is its relaxed position. So actually the actual contraction requires no energy. When it's pulling the actin towards the center, no energy is needed. Now, if we want, in order for this contraction to continue and to, com and to keep pulling the actin towards the center, these myosin heads need to be released. And the way they do that is through ATP. So ATP is going to bind on. And as soon as that binds on, going to allow the, the myosin head to become detached. And then the ATP is going to become hydrolyzed. So it's going to lose a phosphate and that's going to release enough energy to recock the heads a bit, like I said, a bit like a cowboy gun. So it's pulling back again and they will then be able to bind on to another uh, myosin binding site. They'll pull back in again, ATP will release them again, and that's going to continue over and over again until the contraction has come to an end, until no more contractions needed. If you want then to stop contracting, you need to stop sending impulses from your brain to stop that happening. So when the impulses stop, the calcium will be released, uh, will, will break away. It's going to get restored back inside the sarcoplasmic reticulum. And when the, when the calcium ions are gone, you can see the tropomyosin is going to go back to its original shape again. And then we're going to be back to the side. So if we just go back here again, so you can see it quickly again, if we want a contraction to happen, an impulse needs to arrive at the muscle, which is going to cause the release of calcium ions from the sarcoplasmic reticulum. They're going to bind onto troponin. That's going to cause the tropomyosin to move out of the way. Myosin heads can then bind onto the myosin binding sites, and then they'll instantly pull into their normal shape. So that didn't require energy. That was its normal shape. If you want the contraction to continue, ATP is required. ATP is going to bind onto the myosin head and that's going to cause the myosin head to release. ATP will be hydrolyzed to ADP, which releases energy. That energy is going to be used to recock the myosin. And that's going to continue over and over again. And that can happen hundreds of times per second. This is a really fast process. You've got to think of it. It's, it's, it's grabbing, pull, let go, grab, pull, let go, grab, pull. Over and over again, it's really fast. And then for the contraction to stop, the calcium ions need to be removed from the troponin. They get restored back inside the sarcoplasmic reticulum. Everything goes back to normal. All right. So that is the sliding filament theory. So one little side note of just extra information, there's a, a, a term called rigor mortis. When an animal dies, its body goes really stiff. It's really rigor mortis. It just, it's, it's when the body is hard at death. So the reason why it's happening is one of the first things when the body's starting to decay is the sarcoplasmic reticulum as it breaks down, it's releasing calcium ions and the calcium ions are causing the, the trophomycin to move out of the way. 
and then the contraction that contraction happens there but because the body is dead there's no respiration happening there's no atp being produced so therefore this release isn't happening and it's stuck so it's stuck in this position here in this sort of dead contraction so just something else to be aware of all right see you later